When you use a DeFi application, there's no sign up with your email and name, there's no ID required, and in most cases, there's no restriction on your geographical location. All you have to do is click a few buttons, and that's it. Similar to a roundabout, you can enter or exit, or deposit or withdraw your money as you please, barring any hard-coded yield farming-like programs that require a lockup to earn rewards. The point is, in DeFi, we've moved beyond exposing the same personal data over and over again, i.e. your name, your email, and your ID, just to gain access to a bank account or crypto exchange. In this world, all you need is one, a compatible wallet, and two, a little bit of courage to click connect. Now, there is a warning to be heard here, which is legacy crypto vendors, namely exchanges, will throw around the term DeFi in new product offerings. And that's because DeFi is a financial space, but it's also kind of a meme. So just be careful there. And if you have to deposit your assets into an exchange to take advantage of a DeFi product, then the exchange has your assets, you don't. It's not permissionless, and therefore it's definitely not DeFi. So the key takeaway today is permissionlessness -ness 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 isn't just a feature of DeFi, it's what helps to actually qualify an application as being DeFi, permissionless. You can come and go as you please in DeFi as long as you've got a compatible wallet to do so. And if you can recognize the difference between what's permissionless and what is not, you'll hopefully avoid some bad actors. And as DeFi continues to grow more popular in the coming years, I'm sure we'll see plenty of those. So you've been watching DeFi 101. Do be sure and check out the other videos in the series and subscribe to the channel so you don't miss the new videos as they drop. And above all, stay safe out there.